General Garland heading to Mexico today for a first-hand look at the growing border crisis. Meanwhile, a stunning reversal from the White House, now admitting immediate need for a border wall at least 20 miles, a complete 180 from what Biden said on the campaign trail. Trump campaigned on um, build that wall. Are you willing to tear that wall down? No, I'm, there will not be another foot of wall constructed on my administration. Well, Joe's doing a 180. So let's head back down to North Dallas where Lawrence Jones is joined by Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, happy to welcome the senator from the great state of Texas, Ted Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> um, senator, we just played a clip of Joe Biden saying that he wasn't going to build any more wall. Now the administration is saying they're going to do 20 miles, and that works, I guess, great for Texas, 20 miles of border. What do you think about this flip-flop and the overall policy of the Biden administration? Well, I think the policy is collapsing, and it's a disaster. And, and I don't believe a word of it. I think they're pretending. I think they're trying to pretend they give a damn because, look, blue states are finally seeing the consequences of this. You've got blue mayors. You've got Eric Adams in New York saying that illegal immigration is destroying New York City. They've had about 110,000 illegal immigrants, and that's destroying New York City. Well, what the heck do you think 7.6 million has done to Texas and the other border states? And, and so they're experiencing now what we've been seeing for a long time, which is this is a crisis. It's out of control. But I do not believe for a minute Joe Biden wants to fix it. I think this is all window dressing to pretend he cares his objective is he wants even more illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. What is the end goal here for bringing the illegals to the country? I already see this visa thing, yeah. which seems to be a magnet. Yeah. So I think the end goal is two things. Number one, there's a dynamic in the Democrat Party, which is, which is they've gone crazy. Mm -hmm. And in particular, they've handed their policy agenda over to the radical fringe on, on every issue. So, you know, you, you, you look on something on law enforcement, they're listening to the abolish the police and the defund the police nutcases in their party. Mm -hmm. you, you look on things like, like uh, gender issues, they're listening to the people that, 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 that want to sterilize and mutilate children. I mean, those are the crazies. That's not a mainstream view. And on immigration, they're listening to the open borders radicals, the people in their party that believe we should not have borders. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it is, I think there's some very cynical Democrat politicians, yeah. and they look at 7.6 million people, and they see them all as future Democrat voters. And so their view is, is they're willing to look the other way. They're willing to tolerate people being killed. They're willing to tolerate children being brutalized. They're willing to tolerate thousands of women being sexually assaulted and 100,000 people dying of drug overdoses, because all of those issues, they say, are less important to them than bringing in a bunch of Democrats and flipping the entire country blue. It's cynical as all get out, and, and I see no indication that this administration wants to change. Well, now they're taking the air marshals yep. uh, who have a job already. Yeah. They say they don't want to use the border yep. agents. They're, yep. they're doing processing, yep. and now they want to send them to the border. Well, and they are sending them. I'm trying to, to, to get answers from the administration. How many air marshals have they pulled out of the sky? And look, it's worth remembering why we have air marshals. Right. You know, we stood up that program in large part following 9-11, and, and their job is to stop terrorism on the sky. And, and Joe Biden and this administration, they're pulling hundreds of air marshals off the planes. That, that makes us more vulnerable to terrorism, more vulnerable to some other horrific act of terrorism. And then they're sending them, and the reports we're getting is they're sending them involuntarily. They're ordering them to go down to the border. And here's the most maddening thing. They're not doing law enforcement on the border. Right, right. What they're doing is paperwork. They're doing processing. The, the thing to understand, Alejandro Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security, he is not trying to stop this. He doesn't want to stop this. He views his job is to speed up illegal immigration. He, when you listen to, to his testimony before the Senate, what he says is, look, I want to process illegal immigrants faster. You know, one of the last times I was there, uh, the Border Patrol agent showed me every one of them had an app on their phones where they can now process an illegal immigrant in two minutes. And, and you got to understand the dynamic, and I know you've been down to the border, but, yeah. but for folks who haven't been there, I bring senators down to the border all the time, and, and we go out, we'll go out on a midnight patrol, 
and you don't have to go look for illegal immigrants. Literally within minutes, they'll find you. They're just driving through. That they'll come right up to mm -hmm. you and they'll turn themselves into mm -hmm. you. I mean, they're not, most of them are not running. They're mm -hmm. looking for you. They show up and they typically have a plastic baggie yep. that they carry with them. And they've got in that baggie, they've got a cell phone. Uh, they've got usually some form of ID, a passport or birth certificate or driver's license. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then they've got a piece of paper with a name and number and address of the United States. They go find a Border Patrol agent, and with the app, they can scan, say, their passport, and it auto-populates all the fields. Yeah. And it takes them two minutes, and, and they say, Lawrence, where do you want to go? And you say, New York City, Big Apple. They say, great, go sit over there. And all they're doing from that point on is processing to put you on a plane or a bus to send you to wherever you want to go, and every city in America is now a border city. Joe Biden is the last mile of the human trafficking network. Yeah. You got an opponent. Yeah. Um, how, how do y'all feel about that? Ted Cruz has an opponent in this upcoming race. Um, how's that race going right now? Look, it's going to be a real fight. Uh, the Democrats have set their sights on the state of Texas. Chuck Schumer has made clear that I am the number one target in the country mm -hmm. that he wants to take out. And, and my last re-election, in 2018, it was the most expensive Senate race in U.S. history. Mm -hmm. We were outspent three to one. The Democrats flooded tens of millions of dollars into the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what they did. They more than doubled Democrat turnout in Texas. Mm -hmm. They drove Democrat turnout from 1.8 million all the way up to 4 million. Now, that had never happened. That was unprecedented. We saw that happening. We leaned in vigorously. We drove Republican turnout from 2.8 million up to 4.2 million. Mm -hmm. But 0.2 is all I won by, 200,000 votes out of more than 8 million votes cast. They're gonna spend $100 million the next year trying to flip Texas blue. And, and I gotta say, if they succeed, if Texas turns blue, the country's gone. Mm -hmm. The rest of the country, yeah. w we don't stay up at night wondering what happens with Ohio or Florida if Texas turns blue, and so, Look, I'd, I'd tell folks at home, go to tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org. We need your support and help because the Democrats have set their bullseye on my race in Texas. I'll just ask the folks here, who wants to turn Texas blue? I don't think they want to do that. Uh, I'll send it back to you, Steve, in New York City. All right, Lawrence, uh, you could hear a pin drop there. Everybody was listening, hanging on every word from the senator. Great analysis. Thank you both for joining us live. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.